Feeling about your group? How, how have you seen progress? Good, man. I mean, um, I will say this: we're fast defense guys have been flying around out here. Um, it's just really, really good to see. Like I look at where we were last year, where we are today. You know what I'm saying? I feel really, really good all around about every group. You know what I'm saying? I feel good about the depth that we have at each and every position. You know, guys have been able to showcase some of their abilities, and so I'm just excited about that. We put an emphasis on taking the ball away. You know, guys have been guys have been literally taking that taking that to heart. You know, and the way they're practicing, the way they're flying around, I'm I'm excited, man. We're just ready to play an opponent by, by now. Speaking of depth, but safety behind Matt and Miles, mm -hmm. what are you seeing from Demetrius, Sabur, Mac, those three guys? Yeah, man, I really believe that. I mean, between all, I mean, I think I got six guys. You know, um, Ben Clawson has been a been a steady riser as well. You know, but between right, um, Miles Scott, between Matt Bailey, D Hill. Right, obviously you got Mac Mercedes and Sabor Kareem with Ben Clawson, man. I think that um I think that's a pretty, pretty fierce group. I mean, they, they communicate at a high level. Do you know coach always talks about tough, smart, dependable? Like none of that has to do with athleticism. You know what I mean? None of that has to do with 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 your 40 time. You know what I mean? And so guys can get us lined up, guys can fly around, guys have been making a lot of plays on the ball. And so um we know in this system and within the framework of this defense, right? If you can just do that, you can give yourself a chance to be successful. And I think um, they've done that for the most part. What does each of those guys bring to the team? Well, they're all kind of kind of a tad bit different, you know. I would say um, I, I do lean a lot on Miles Scott and Matt Bailey just because they, you know, they probably don't want to with a little more experience. But um, um, I, I do think the guys that have been in rotation with them, they've done a great job of taking heed to what they're saying because they have been in the five. You know, it's not a selfish group. You know, anytime you got a room of guys who want to see the other guy have success, I think that's a that's literally the epitome of team. And so, um, just from a defensive perspective, man, guys have been it's been truly a blessing to see guys grow each and every practice. You know, and it's been fun to watch. Brett said the team is playing with an edge right now, or working out with an edge in camp. How have you seen that on the defensive side? Yeah, just from the standpoint of 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 you know, like we've been able to just throw small clippings of you know situations from last year, and you know, obviously we got probably forty five new faces and. Being able to show those clippings and the guys that have been here to kind of learn and grow through those moments, um, I think part of the reason why you play with, play with an edge is when you've been subjected to certain things in your life, right, or in a game in, in previous history, you learn from those, or you or you hope that you learn from them. And so, guys, it's been they they've been really taking heed to us practicing situational football and trying to be detailed and and just trying to really really be intentional about going out there and doing what they're supposed to do, whether it's um, a tackling circuit, whether it's Right, a takeaway circuit, whether it's um, a situation of football, doing Hail Mary in the game, you know, like the level of detail in which guys have been practicing that has been very, very pleasing from a defensive standpoint. What's the biggest thing maybe you need to yet to be accomplished in camp before you get game ready, so to speak? Stop hitting each other. You know, um, I think this is a new age of college football, right? Like, I mean, it's not a secret. We got guys getting paid pretty good money, you know, and, and from that standpoint, right, like I look at just the NFL layout, um, and you just got to be able to protect your roster and be careful, you know, just with with because you are close to a game, you know, and and I think coach has done a tremendous job with how we practice and how we do things, but just getting them, got to make sure we get them to the fight, you know, get them to the game, you know, because um, obviously this unit university, the collective, I mean, everybody's invested a lot in these young men, even prior to NIL. Let me be clear about that. But um, obviously the NIL piece takes on a whole nother standpoint, you know, and, and you want the young men to, 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 to be good and ready to go and, and healthy, right? Like, like you spend the standpoint of, you know, I think, I think um, um, fall camp has kind of changed a little bit historically because, you know, back in the day, right? You had, you had three practices, you had two a days, right? And so guys are beating up on each other. But now a lot of coaches, especially coaches, just taking a more of a, um, a more intelligent standpoint in terms of just trying to get guys physically and mentally ready for 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 game one. Does that mean with the guys that really like to hit, are you having to tell them, hey, pump the brakes here on your side of the ball? Yeah, man. I mean, you got. I mean, anytime as a coach, when you want guys to execute at a high level, and right, and you're on them, right? Um, I mean, I get on my players pretty hard because I care about them, but they can take that coaching, and all they want to do is please you. And so at times, right, like guys guys just flying around you know and so we gotta i mean i think we've been doing a really good job at it but continue to teach guys to just to understand the situation that we're in right it's good versus good gotta protect your teammates i mean we we probably hear that daily and i'm sure probably every other school does that as well but it's a it's a learning process man just to make sure that we can 
that we can get to the game and not and not and not hit ourselves over the head daily. And I think guys have been doing a really good job of that Jeremy, protecting each other. Sorry. And when you have two guys like JoJo and Demetrius John who are making positional changes, the, the rule of thumb usually is sometimes you have to start back and square a run. But I don't get the feeling you guys feel that way about those two guys and, and the move that they're making. Dude, I will tell you this, right? Like, I mean, JoJo, what JoJo has done, right? Being that he's changed positions, and I know Coach always says, "Speak for yourself," but. Um, he's done some really, really cool things, you know, and from a coordinator standpoint, you get really, really excited about when you talk about him rushing a passer, you know, his ability to play inside and outside, being able to drop off the ball, being able to blitz. I mean, he's done some really, really special things in the last couple of weeks. It's 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 almost like he's been doing that his whole time here. It's been pretty, pretty cool, right? Um, seeing, seeing Demetrius um, move outside, it's going to be really, really beneficial to him. Coach Clint has done a tremendous job. And um, he had a he had a hell of a practice yesterday, man. I wish you guys could have could have been there. I'm so, teasing you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wish you guys could have been there though. But um, no, he, he had he had a really really good practice. You know, and he's steadily getting better. And I think he's a young man. The more reps he gets, the better he's gonna be. I saw uh, Dylan Rosiak get nominated for the Butkus Squad. What does that mean for him? And, and what does he mean to this team? Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, I mean, Dylan is just a workhorse, man. Like. I mean, what he does is not always pretty. You know, he just gets the job done, right? Like, he's one of those blue-collar, hard-working young men. He's just, whatever job it is you ask him to do, he's going to get it done. And for him to be nominated for that, that's, like, really, really cool for him, right? But it's um, it's a testament to, to not only him, but his, his peers, the guys around him. You know, and um, he's a catalyst of our defense. He's a leader of our defense. You know, he's obviously the centerpiece of it. And um, obviously, if Dylan plays well, we play well collectively as a unit. And, um, you know, from from an individual standpoint for him, you hope that we can put him in a position to have success to go and win. But more importantly, you hope that he can put us in a position from a coaching standpoint to go out there and just play great ball. And obviously, Terrence and Xavier played a lot of snaps in college football. What do you see from the group behind them? Caleb Patterson, Chase Canada, Jaden Clark. I don't know if I'm missing anybody, but what do you see in that group? I will say one name you're missing is a guy by the name of Tory Cox. <laughs> right? I know nobody's not really speaking about him. Right? I won't say too much on him again. Rule of thumb from coaches, speak for yourself. But I will tell you this, right? Um, um, just like Terrence Brooks' dad, Torrey Cox's dad played in the NFL as well. And um, he's been having a really, really good fall camp. You know, um, this is probably the deepest we've been in terms of whether it's group one, two, three, or four. Like, I feel extremely comfortable about either one of those group of guys getting out there. And it's been so encouraging. Um, I think with what Coach Parker has done in terms of I can see why he's been a fast riser in this profession, right? Coach Parker's a, um, a relatively young coach in this profession. I think this is year three, four, maybe, you know? Um, but just the way he teaches those guys and the way they take heed to it, it's been, it's been poetry in motion, man. It's been absolutely beautiful. And so um, the guys are taking the coaching, they're adjusting to it. Guys are, guys are making plays out there. And it's, I'm just telling you, like, it's really, really exciting to see, you know? And, and, and at, at this standpoint, obviously I'm, I'm just ready to play an opponent, but um, just, it's just a testament to our whole, um, our whole coaching staff, right? Like you get in this point of camp, right? Where mentally it can be draining and physically, right? But just the, the amount of focus that our players have had throughout the course of um, these last couple of weeks, right? Being so locked in in our practices and the detail that goes into our practices, right? Um, it's just, uh, obviously we got to tip our hat to our head coach, Coach B. Coach, a lot, of, a lot of turnover up front, obviously, kind of the biggest story for the defense coming into the year. Uh, it seems like finding a, a playmaker up there is a priority. Has has anyone jumped out at you this camp? Anybody taken on that role? Again, Coach said, speak for yourself, but I would tell you all of them. Um, we, 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 we got some dudes up front, man, um, that, you know, the last time I was out of place, I remember I was at NC State, we had four D linemen drafted. And I'm not saying we're going to have four D linemen drafted, but um, obviously Johnny is in a, in a league of his own, man. But I think that, that we got four or five guys up front that I think are pretty special, you know, just in terms of rushing the passer, in terms of getting off the ball, right? Some some guys that people don't know about, and I think you guys will have a chance to see this season. And so I think it's going to be just be pretty cool just to see those guys kind of take on their own element, right? Um, from our standpoint as coaches, we just want to put them in position to have success. But um, just overall, what we've done collectively throughout the, the, the course of fall camp, um, I, I can't tell you how excited I am as a play caller, you know, um, from the standpoint of having special guys up front to rush the pass. Does Alex Bray have that in, in him, you think, to emerge as one of those guys that's going to be noteworthy, you know, and 
on NFL draft boards, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, obviously Alex Brees, it's, it's, he's still young, he's still a, he's still a puppy, but I do think he has he has he has the pedigree, right? He has he has the pedigree of all those guys who've kind of came through his program and had success early on as as young defensive linemen and end up being studs, um, kind of like as they kind of transition. Joe Barner's another one, man. Joe Barner's. Joe Barner's Joe Barner has has all the tools and upside and, and he's been having a, a really good fall. He's growing every single practice. Obviously you guys know about the about Seth Coleman, Gay Backus, Alex um 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 Alec Bryant, right? You, you guys may or may not know about Dennis Briggs. I call him Unk, right? I mean he's 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 such a steady piece inside for us. And and I believe our secret weapon is is, is T Rod Edwards. Right, um, because he does a lot of the dirty work and don't get a lot of the credit. But um, I mean, the, the fall camp he's had is it's it's it's. I mean, Coach James, Coach Jameson done, have done a tremendous job, and I, I can't be more excited about this unit. More about Dennis Briggs. You said what, you call him Monk. Monk, yeah. Just because he's older. Because he's old as hell. <laughs> How many seven year guys have you had? Uh, have I think I think Zeke. Zeke is another one. Okay. Um, I haven't had too many seven year guys, man. This is. I mean, between him and Zeke, they're probably the first two. They're probably the first two I've had. Dan's a little different too. He's mm -hmm. got two young daughters. Yep. Uh, again, that probably makes you older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. It makes you it makes you more mature as well when you've kind of been through the fire and sure. obviously having kids will do that, right? Having right. kids exposed to some things that as many as you. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but having kids will expose you to some things that people um, without kids don't know, and so. Um, I mean, Dennis is, I mean, it's, he's been such a pleasure just to have in our meetings, right? The amount of wisdom that he has, right? Um, um, I think that kid's upside is like really, really high. He does seem really mature beyond.